Hi guys, my name is Saurabh Porwal and let's start our continuous uh, journey to the DevOps. Now in this session, what we'll do is we'll try to do a Kubernetes project. Now I've told multiple times that the best way to start learning something is to do it practically. And uh, I'm sure many of you must have uh, learned Docker and Kubernetes all in the textbook, but uh, it's very, very important to actually do a project on it. So this is a sample project that we will be discussing today. And uh, I would really recommend that you try it uh, on your own. So let's uh, review one of the documents that I found online. Uh, it's just a disclaimer, it's not my created document. So we'll go through the document. It contains a series of steps on how to actually execute a small Kubernetes project. But I'm pretty sure that it will cover all the outlines of what you would require if you were to do a Kubernetes project on your own. So let's uh, look at the document. Uh, so I've found a document online on a Kubernetes scenario. So let's go through the requirements. So the requirement is that an organization, let's say an XYZ, has recently transformed their IT application from monolithic to microservices architecture. Now, they have been struggling with deployments in such a complex infrastructure and inconsistency across the system. The organization has hired you to help them with simplifying their deployment process by containerizing their applications. They're using Spring Boot to develop their microservices. So it's an organization which is uh, doing uh, monolithic so far. So you're asked to convert monolithic into a microservices architecture. And then how would you do it using Kubernetes? So very, very uh, similar problems that you get uh, in an organization. So once you do this project, you will have a pretty good hands-on on uh, how the organizations develop a Kubernetes uh, and its associated infrastructure. So the next step is a step-by-step -step procedure to implement the solution. So the implementation is, you've got a Spring and initializer, uh, which then goes to the Spring Boot application, uh, which then can be implemented into a Docker file. Docker file you would build to do a Docker image. You would push it to Docker Hub, and from Docker Hub, you would use a Kubernetes cluster on the master and the worker nodes. So for those who are pretty conversant with Kubernetes, so it's got a master and a worker node. But if you're installing a Kubernetes on an EKS, AWS actually takes care of the, your whole master node control plane. Uh, and you just need to work on uh, putting up your containers into the worker nodes. So a practical solution to how you would be deploying it. So first we are going to deploy our application into our Kubernetes cluster, application development to push image into the Docker Hub. And let's see how we do it. So the step one is to create a Kubernetes cluster. So I would advise that a Kubernetes cluster be created into an AWS EKS because that takes a lot of headache out of uh, your putting up uh, your Kubernetes uh, into uh, wherever you want. Uh, uh, you can do it through your, uh, Oh, what do you call it, uh, mini cube, all that sort of stuff as well. You can install Kubernetes on your own, uh, but uh, a proper way to do might be using EKS because that's the way you will learn EKS as well. So instead of a Kubernetes cluster, you pull the image to the master node and you write the deployment file. So these are the three steps. Let's look into in detail. So creating a Kubernetes cluster. So there is a reference guide I mentioned in the document. Now I'll be pasting the link to this document on the description, uh, but if you need more details, just uh, write in the comments uh, and probably I'll be uh, providing more details onto the document and how to, if, how to troubleshoot it. So creating a new Kubernetes cluster. So there's a guide on how you would use a Kubernetes cluster on Ubuntu. So for creating the cluster, we need servers, uh, which will have at least two gig RAM. And now you would avoid all these things if you're using EKS. Uh, you can use T2 medium, uh, which is under the, uh, not under the free tier, obviously. Now the, the disadvantage of using something like a T2 micro is that once you are scheduling all the pods in it, uh, then uh, you'll find that some of the pods are not scheduled, uh, some of them are in pending state, they're not running correctly. So you need to allocate a fair amount of memory. A T2 medium is something which can run a small project. Uh, so once you have chosen a T2 medium, then you enable all the traffic in the security group for the for the servers. Uh, you give an ample amount of storage to it. Now in both the master and the worker nodes, create the below script file and run that file. It will install all the required configurations on all the nodes. 
let's look at the script file. So what it does is uh, it does the apt update. So just updating it, it goes the curl command. Uh, it gets the latest instance ID. Uh, after that, it does a couple of sudo and uh, to, to the different uh, users. Uh, the most important thing it is doing here is your apt update and installing the containers uh, using your install hyphen y container. So it's installing all the different components of the Kubernetes here. Uh, and then it's installing your kubelet. So this is where uh, you're installing uh, your kubelet and the kube ADMs. So once you've installed the script, you give an execute permission to the script, you sudo as root, and then you run the script.sh. So this is where it shows uh, how the script is running. So once you have this script here, uh, and then you run it, now you will get all these script files available in the description of the document uh, of the uh, video, and then you can actually start executing it. So you need to copy this script command, try to understand what it is doing, and then execute it. So once you execute the script, thereafter you need to initialize the Kubernetes master node. So how you do it is uh, there's a command to initialize the its cube ADM in it. You initialize the master node. But if you do all of this in uh, your EKS, you don't need to actually do it. So, so what this is this solution is doing is it's installing everything onto your EC2 itself. But you can do it this way as well. So now they run the following command to start the cluster, uh, it's creating a new directory called .cube. It's copying all the different uh, relevant configuration files into the cube directory, it's changing the ownership of the cube directory. Now, and it's exporting one of the variables, cube config 2.2 to this. After that, it's creating a pod network into the master node. So how you do that is you do a kubectl apply. Uh, you would get this all these links uh, in the document. And I'll put the document there as well. So these are all the descriptions of once you have started po uh, putting in all these different commands that I mentioned above. After that, you need to join all the worker nodes to the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the below command will give the join will give the joining command, which will need uh, each worker node to connect with the cluster. So you have a cube ADM token and create command. All right. So once you have run that, you need to check that all the nodes are connected. They're in ready state. You if once you do a cube CTL get node, so it will tell you what are all the different nodes that are available. So you've got, a, you've got one master node and two worker nodes that you have just configured now. I would highly recommend that you do these steps because unless and until you do it, you will not be able to actually get a feel of uh, what exactly happened. All right, kubectl cluster info. So you get you get all these different uh, information. So you get uh, when you do a get nodes, you get master node and uh, uh, all these different worker nodes. So now your Kubernetes cluster is completely created. So again, if you're doing that in ECS, you would have skipped all these different uh, steps that we mentioned about uh, on the EKS. All right, step two, pull the image to the master node. So this time I'm going to deploy my address book application in my Docker Hub account. So first install Docker into the master node using the following command. So you need to install Docker. Uh, you get need to do, do a Docker IO install. Now, once you have done that, just use a login password. Okay, so once your Docker is uh, installed, then you do a, a Docker images. It will uh, it will start pulling uh, whatever image name that you're given. So here it has done Docker pull, and then an address book image. So this is this is the application which it is trying to actually deploy uh, using the image. So if you see uh, after the deployment, if you do a pseudo Docker images, then you get all the different uh, images. Uh, so this, this is one image here, which is the address book image. After you have done that, you need to, for any Kubernetes uh, deployment, so there are two different uh, deployment files. One is your deployment.yaml and the service.yaml. Uh, in deployment.yaml, uh, you've got all these different configurations regarding the application. So you put on the API version, uh, the kind is deployment, the metadata of the uh, application, which is the address book here. You put in the replica, you just need one replica here on the deployment. Uh, selectors, you need to write the name of the app here in template. Again, the same metadata that here. 
So it, you put in the name of the containers, the image that it is picking up from, which is this, which should be the same as whatever uh, we deployed the image, which is Saras 23. And I think if you look in here, it's the same image that we are now trying to deploy, Saras 23. All right, and the container port is 8080, that uh, the application will run on the 8080 port on the container. All right, so this is the screenshot uh, of the pasted deployment.yaml. Then you create a service.yaml. Service.yaml, uh, it will create a service for the same uh, application configuration. You got the API servers, kind is the service, not the other one, the kind was deployment. You got the metadata for address book service. Uh, the app is address book, which will be the same as the app in the deployment.yaml. Uh, you have a port of 80 and target port of 8080. That means your service will be available on the web browser at an 80 port. But uh, at, at the behind the scenes, it's going to a target port of 8080. The type is a load balance. All right, so now you have got this uh, service.yaml. So after that, you do a kubectl apply. You need to run the kubectl apply command to apply both the deployment and the service YAMLs. Uh, you just check it here, getting the status of the pod. So when it is, once it is running, uh, you do a kubectl get pods. So now, so now you will see, so kubectl get pods. So it will have one pod running in here. Uh, so which is your application pod. Now, it says kubectl get pod, so it's got that. Uh, and then there is a kubectl scale deployment, and now it has just increased the replicas from one to 10. So in here, it has manually increased it using this command line, uh, but uh, you can also increase it within the deployment.yaml as well as to how many replicas do you want. So in this instance, so it has now, as soon as you put in the scale cup command, so it, the number of replicas have changed from, one to 10. So then if you do a kubectl get pods, so it got 10 pods now. If you get the uh, kubectl get service address book, so then it will show you all the different details of the services here. So the service has got its name, the namespace, the labels, the selector, and all these different types of uh, metadata in it. So it also create an external IP address for load balancers, and we can access the application in this IP address. And then the Kubernetes application deployment is successful. So this is an example of how you would create a Kubernetes project on your own. So I would highly recommend that you do that. Uh, if you have not created any project so far, so this, this might be one of the steps that will give you a very, very practical knowledge of how to create it. So I will put this uh, document in the description. You can download it and uh, then you can start executing it on, on your own. So happy learning guys, uh, keep learning. So, and uh, this was a short uh, Kubernetes project that you can do on your own. I would highly recommend it. My name is Saurabh and keep learning. Thanks, bye.